live from the Catskills and the animals staple of stars. Saltasia presents this week superstar Michael Flippe from Pearl and Bogodeller. Hey, everybody. We got Funk Doggy Dog over here. Casey, get over here, you little whippersnapper. Come here, Casey. Come here, Casey. Atomic Dog is in the house. What has he got in his mouth? You'll see him soon. We got a, a canine, an actual canine. I'm not talking about all my friends, all my dogs. Okay, welcome to Andy Animal Stable of Stars. This is the camera I look into. Yes, I'm gonna look into the camera now. This is my new thing. Um, okay, we're gonna, I'm just gonna just cut straight to the chase. I went to the original Misfits last night in Newark, New Jersey, which was the fifth show, I believe, of their big reunion of Dan, Glenn Danzig with the Kaiafa brothers, uh, Jerry, only a Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein. Dave Lombardo from Slayer on drums. This is my second time seeing this. I saw them in Chicago back in 2016. Some of you may know I'm a I'm a real I'm a real misfits nut. You can tell by the shirt. <laughs> Where do I begin? This whole thing is brilliant. Danzig held out, broke up the band in 1983 and said he'd never do it again, and waited till 2016 to bring it back. And uh, I think it was a pretty brilliant move on his part uh, to wait that long. Because if they did it in the 90s, they would have been playing like Roseland. But no, I saw him at Prudential Center in Newark last night, and that sold out in a matter of a few days. And we're talking the cheapest tickets are probably about $150. And they had suicidal tendencies. They were great. They had Murphy's Law. They were great. Harley Flanagan, I missed him. But I heard he was great, great, great. So on the way there, me and my friend Marissa did the pilgrimage to Glenn Danzig's childhood home. Can we get a shot of that? That's his childhood home right there. Okay. That's his house right there. And I peeked around the corner. Which way am I moving my arm? Right around here is a basement window where this entrepreneur Glenn Danzig when he was a kid he'd be printing up 45 sleeves and misfits t-shirts with the crimson ghost skull image a lot of things went on and a lot of important stuff went on in the basement there he is there's this, the ghost right there <laughs> so I pull up front we pull up front we're taking pictures this guy in a white collared shirt and a tie and a briefcase walks out with his wife and I'm like, oh, I hope you don't mind. I'm, uh, are you aware of the history of this house? And he's like, no. And we're like, oh, Glenn Danzig. He had no idea who Glenn Danzig was. This guy had no idea the, and the, what was in the air in New Jersey that day. There, you know, we were in Lodi. The show was in Newark. But, you know, there's been billboards. Billboards all over Jersey with the, the misfits are back. They're back home. The boys are back in town. And uh, yeah, what can I say? It was a phenomenal performance. And those guys, those guys played a very important role in my life. And uh, I didn't try to hang out afterwards and meet any of them. I've had opportunities to meet some of them. And I don't want to do it. You know, like Elvis fans and stuff. Like I, I, it's the same with Elvis. I've had chances to go to Graceland. But I don't want to go snooping around the man's house. I'll go look outside the house. I was, it was, I was at a war with myself if I should go look at his childhood home. I was okay. I was okay about it. But, uh, you know, I don't want, I don't want to 
I, I, I don't want to meet him. I don't want to meet Glenn Danzig. I can't handle it. Of course, Bobby Steele, the original guitar player. And anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, we got the Meltasia Festival. It's not called the Meltasia Festival. It's the great fun abrasion this year, July 27th and 28th. Uh, Thelma and the Sleaze, a uh, great group from Nashville, just jumped on board. Uh, and uh, we got a couple other bands that aren't confirmed yet. But, uh, you know, we're, we, we got a couple other bands that were uh, sneaking on. And uh, what else? Oh, yeah. This, well, let me tell you about this first. Our tickets are half sold out now. I might have said that. Did I say that in the last episode? If I did, I was maybe stretching the truth a little. No, I think, I think it was around 30 at that time, 30%. So, uh, yeah, the tickets are half sold out. Get on it. Don't come crying to me when it's sold out. And, and, and you see your pictures of your friends having the greatest weekend of their lives. Chugging brew dogs with the black lips, chanting in the clams. Daddy Long Legs, the nude party. The list goes on and on. You're going to be bringing your own beers in. Bring me some Jenny Cream Ale, because that's my new thing. Jenny Red. I drink beer now. Genesee, Rochester, New York. Okay, what else now? Um, yes, this coming weekend, we're going to have, well, Saturday afternoon, I think at three we go live with Boy Toy from New York City, great band Boy Toy. And uh, and then we're all going to wrap up and go to Station uh, after. And Boy Toy is going to put on a great rock and roll performance with their rock and roll band. And then my band, Sensuous Tiger, is going to gonna close the night out. And, uh, and and who knows what else is going to happen. I guess I'm, I'm supposed to be, I'm going to DJ at it. Some old, some old, Rock, rock and roll 45s. Uh, that's going to be cool. And yeah, the Misfits show is great. It was great. I'm sure there's a lot more. There is a lot more I could say, but. Well, let me tell you this about the Misfits show. I'm not going to show you any footage of last night's Misfits show because there's no cell phones allowed. They give you these special little pouches. This is what I want to say. At Prudential Center, they get these little pouches that you put your phone in and they lock them, which I thought was cool. There wasn't like phones flashing everywhere. But there are people who, with, with lack of, you know, as at the request of Glenn Danzig, he said, I don't want phones at the show. I want it to be like the old days. And, and you know, he, he has a certain mystique. But people want to be disrespectful and film it anyway. That's your problem. Uh, I'm not going to show any of the footage that's on the internet. I'm not going to watch any of the footage that's on the internet. Um, because that's lame. Anyways, we're going to cut to a commercial. And we will be right back with Clip Payne from Parliament Funkadelic! <laughs> Holy crow. Nightmare of more than 30 incredible rooms, each with its own very special surprise. Wander through its myriad of secret passageways and winding labyrinths. Discover the graveyard of the living dead and its unimagined terror. There's Redfield and his spiders, the Prince of Darkness, Count Dracula, and many more. At the haunted mansion at Long Branch, it's waiting for you. There's nothing in the world like Action Park. I can't wait to jump in the tar sample. I love the Grand Prix action from Action Park. I just love the ride. Action Park is better than Broadway. <laughs> it's my first time in Action Park, and I love it. They have more water rides here than anywhere in the world. There's nothing in the world like Action Park. Hi! Now is the time to purchase tickets for the wildest and most intimate camping event of the summer. Andy Animal's Great Meltdown Funibration. Located at Uncle Pete's Campground, just outside the beautiful Catskill Mountains town, Phoenicia, New York. 
Upon arrival, you can set up your own personal camping village at no additional cost. After that, you can take a dip in the Esopus Creek while sipping on your very own ice-cold beer. Did we mention that Meltasia is a BYOB affair? Into the evening, you can watch your favorite bands perform under a dazzling array of Christmas string lights and psychedelic projections. Come spend two melted days and nights of summer fun at Andy Animal's Great Meltdown Funabration. Tickets are limited and moving fast, so buy today! Tickets are limited and going fast, so buy today! Yo, that Action Park commercial. Me, amongst many other people, injured themselves at Action Park. That was then, and this is now. Let's bring on some new action. Clip, get the heck up here, would you? Yeah! Yeah! Well, you know this. You look beautiful. I can see you right on the thing. All right. What's up, buddy? Oh, man. It's, uh... It's, uh... It's my gap tooth overall brother. My brother. Yeah, how about that? Gap teeth and the it's overall. It's trait for sure. Yeah. How about that? Me and Clip got a thing. Yeah. For the bodacious gap tooth overall brothers. Yeah, and, and uh, we're like really good backstage characters. And we're really good looking. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. All right, Clip, let's cut to the chase. Tell me how you started in Parliament Funkadelic. How I started in Parliament Funkadelic was as a valet. Uh, I was a valet. I was a a listener. And uh, I was a uh, gopher. Yeah. Yeah. You always have to intern in some whatever it is you, you choose, you know. Uh, the atomic dog. Oh yeah, I got. I, I keep my dog with me. <laughs> he's uh, he's Woodstock's on. <laughs> Somebody get a shot of this atomic dog. You just zoom the camera down under the. Yeah, their brother Ham. He Ham's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody knows him. Uh, it's a community project. Yeah. All right, we'll get to Casey in a bit. So you yeah. were you were a, you were a gopher valet. Yeah, I was a gopher in the valet. Coffee uh, boy. Yeah, I think that's the best way to uh, to learn the craft is to uh, to be able to learn what everybody's doing before you like become hands on. You know, I got in the business. He's wow. eating a pine cone. That's psychedelic. Can we get get him eating the pine cone? I'm sorry, Clip. Oh yeah, see, yeah, my dog's <laughs> always still in the show. That's Casey. Yeah, that's the atomic dog, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. All right, Casey, you'll have you'll get known worldwide. <laughs> now he is. All right, so all right, so go on. All right, no more. All right, Casey, we'll get back to you. Yeah, well, well, basically, you know, I interned. Uh, I uh, I kept notes. Um, I don't even know what my job was. I, I, on some days you you're amused, and on some days you're the what whatever it takes to uh to keep the show going and, and keep the the band's uh, motivation up. So just being in a band period, there was a wait. Clip was this when you were working in the hotel? Uh yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's a story I was asking Andy. You know, when you were working there, how you actually first got introduced. Oh. Yeah, how'd you get introduced? Yeah, how'd you get into it? Uh, I was working at this. Actually, I was just at the age where I was sneaking into clubs. And uh, my, uh, my partners and I, we are, we snuck into the club. We were not even quite 18. And uh, we used to, we knew where the Funkadelics were staying. And there was a there was a restaurant called the Big Bar- the Red Barn that was right next to this hotel. This is in Detroit. In Detroit, Detroit yeah, yeah. Uh, in the New Center area, right across from uh, General Motors. So we went, you know, we would go down there at the end of the parties, wherever we would come from the club, and then we would just go scope 
and see if we will get a sighting of the the funkadelics. Yeah. And, and so we would eat in the restaurant next door. And we we did it so much that the guy from the hotel, uh, another backstory, the hotel had just acquired an AFIS account. Now the AFIS account is the Armed Force Interest Exam Service. Yeah. And uh, it used to be at a hotel down in, in, in downtown Detroit, but now the contract was coming up because the other hotel, I can't mention the name of it, but uh, <laughs> they had the AFIS account and some kids joining the military uh, there to take their physical tests and their written tests. They would always make two trips before they would be shipped off. And these guys got drunk and partied, like over party, and they threw a couch out of the, the window and it landed on like a 80 year old man. Oh and no. Yeah, and it killed them. Oh it boy. It's just crazy. That's the backstory. Yeah. So they lose the contract at that at that hotel. And this hotel, this guy who's been sitting in the red barn across from us is noticing that we're there every day, every night. So he asked, what are you, what are you waiting for? I said, oh, we're waiting <laughs> on the Funkadelics because, you know. Just want to look at it. Yeah. And um, he said, I got a better one. You guys can come work at, at this hotel. Oh. And they hired us to every day look like AP's officers. I mean, like, not look like AP's officers, but look like kids joining the service. So we would be there every day and we party with them. And our job was that if there was gonna be a sofa or any kind of thing that would make the, the hotel lose the contract, that's when we would have to blow our cover and say, yeah. we work for the hotel. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise it was just party and BS, you know? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I did that for about, I don't know, maybe about a year and a half. I, during that time, I, I, I was the, the um, the swim attendant for Carol Channing at the hotel. Uh, I was the, you know, I was the turnkey for a lot of things that were going on at the hotel at that time. And uh, so I, my chest was a little puffed out. I thought I was a man, you know, but I was 18. And uh, one day, the the uh, the uh, my, the boss said told us that we could all carry guns. <laughs> hey, nice sound effect over there. <laughs> Was that supposed to be a gunshot? Oh yeah. <laughs> what is this? The Howard Stern show? Yeah, that's like pine cones for real. <laughs> so. Uh, was that the dog coughing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember he was chewing pine cones over there. I thought B.A. was making some sound effects. <laughs> One more time, everybody give it up for Casey. Yeah, Casey. Yeah, Casey. That's right. Where you at, Casey? Yeah, you got to understand, Casey is a community pro project. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of owners and a lot of, uh, you know, sitters for this guy. So in forward uh this guy gives us guns and he tells us that 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 we have the right to use the guns to guard like some of the you know we're feeling like now we're feeling like guards we're feeling like partiers we're feeling like all this stuff my whole thing is and i gotta add my buddies that i was with we were a singing group so the beauty was we got to practice singing while we party. What was the singing group called? Uh, uh, like a doo -wop New, New Essence. Yeah, it was a doo -wop group. New Essence. Cool. Yeah, when we were singing, you know. Um, you got any recordings of that? Uh, no, no. Because we never got to that. We, yeah. we were like, you know, at the at street the, corner street harmony. Street corner harmony all the time. So uh, one day, there was like a, a Hertz across the street. And we thought somebody was messing around with the car. So we go, we go get our guns. It's like, you know, 
and we're gonna play body, you know, we're gonna play guard and and I'm coming through the door and as I'm coming through the door, in comes like George Clinton and he's walking in the door. Dr. Funkenstein. I'm going out the door, he's coming in the door and he looks at me and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, you know, I work for the hotel. <laughs> and he goes, okay, uh, you got a car? I said, yeah, he goes, you need to go get me some eggs. <laughs> you know, cool, you know? And uh, it was like that moment. And the, and the crazy part I had been, while I was at the hotel, I already met like a lot of the the group. Yeah. As they came in to record. So I knew, you know, this was their hub. And uh and the job now I was stuck to the I was kind of married to the job, but I but my dream was to be over there to to learn recording. Plus I had been at United Sound, which was like the main studio in Detroit where all the prominent acts recorded. So I wanted to go over there and learn how to record. And I would go to the door, but I knew I didn't have the money to go into the place. Yeah. So uh, one day the guy who ran the studio came out of the door and he says to me, he says, when, when are you gonna come in? And I said, you know, and he goes, well, you know, I'm the, I'm the head engineer here and I never took lessons. The rest of these guys are kind of privileged. They're like, they're taking the lessons because they can afford it and they yeah. probably have no passion for it. So you come on in here. Okay. Now, I was his guy in, in, in one third of my time, I was the security guy in one third of my time, and I was this gopher for George. And then one day it all came, and I, got, I fell out with with, the, with my boss at the hotel on some real crappy situation where I wasn't going to play GI Joe for him. Oh yeah, and uh, so he he dropped the old N bomb on me. Uh oh, and I was like, okay, cool. George said, you know, you didn't need to be over here anyway. And uh, he said, take me to the studio. So from that point, I ride into the studio and there I'm sitting with the guy who's been allowing me to learn how to just uh, plug up things and set mics up. And now I have a producer that I, you know, I kind of worship anyway. Yeah. So. I had a lot, a lot of years of just watching, even on days that there wasn't a George day, there still would be a session day. Yeah. So I watched people come through the studio. This was around 1970, 77, 77, 77, 76, 77. Was George worried about you though? Did you get to tell you fuck around all those cops? Uh, yeah, I could, you know, that, that stuff is kind of heavy. I, I'll tell, I would tell that to your producer. <laughs> Because that's the story I was asking. You know, well, well, I'll give it to you like this. Um, I like it where I am now because it's, it's like a small town ways, and I'm sure some, there's some whack folks in every situation. But in where I live, I was too close to seeing like not the cheerfully upside of law enforcement. You saw some crazy things I in Detroit in yeah. the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And, and, and I, I was, uh, I gotta say, I, I was, um, I had fun with it as a kid. I had fun with it, you know, but. Uh, so what, what what was your reaction when were they just like, do you want to be in the group, or how did how did it how did it, it happen? It just, uh, did it just gradually kind of just like you just set with George on a lot of sessions. So I knew I, I I would meet I would meet each member as they came into town because most of the Funkadelics were not from Detroit. Yeah, matter of fact, there were no Funkadelics from Detroit. They were that was a Jersey band. 
Yeah. So everybody's kind of like the Misfits. Band. Yeah. It was a Jersey band. So um, uh, I got to meet everybody. And then it was during the time that that it was just hit record, hit record. And basically, it's a kind of Parliament Funkadelic is like is a roster. It's almost like uh, if you have this year's uh, uh, team, and then next year the roster is a little different. Yeah. So you know, and George Clinton is like a kind of like a club boxing coach, and he's kind of looking for like the crazies anyway. Yeah. And and then if you're like a super fancy consider yourself like you know high-end musician you're probably not a, all that creative you're just flexing yeah so so you know in he, he, he pretty much has always uh kept new fresh fresh uh energy coming into the thing and uh as i've been there for a while you know, my, my deal with him was like, well, I tried to play you a few songs. You heard it. You went, okay, that's nice. And he left it at that. And he goes, yeah. And I goes, well, I don't understand what it is I'm supposed to be doing right now. And he goes, I think you're an a and R. So and I said, I don't even know what that means. He says, well, Everybody seems to like you. People are creative when you're around or you're in the creative spaces that they're in. So I got a hundred people to make up a band that are always like wanting me to do something, get hear them out. Yeah. And and uh I can't get to everybody like that. He said, so you know, your job would be to kind of participate or help or enable them to do whatever it is that they're trying to figure out creatively because there's a lot of uh, neophytes. And then then he's got a, a, a nice Motown version and Stax version of Friends that can put sweetener on things. Yeah. So, so most of the kids my age was just new to it bring them in so they got a thing it's a you know they're learning if you listen to like most of most of the greats or the legendary rock and rollers you know they're figuring it out you don't get them when they're 40 and then like all of a sudden they're they're, they're like 17 yeah. and 19 and then like you listen coming. up kids yeah so my deal is I've been in the business for 41 years now and I never was, I was always too busy like helping and I, to, to actually want a record for myself because I just, I have a love for like watching musicians shed and, and develop. So that's my job. You, you you became like the band like narrator kind of right like uh, yeah. What, what is your what is your title in the uh, uh, clip? What clip does? Yeah. <laughs> which, Speaking of which, I just found out today that you sang on twenty five. Or you didn't sing. You performed on their first ever recording. Oh, that Edwin was my, Star. Yeah, that was my first session. 25 you know miles that? Can we listen to that? Are you telling me that? Let's listen to that song. Let's listen to that song for a second. Uh oh. And then we'll. I had no idea. All 
All right, what did you do on this? Now, oh, you can cut that. I'm gonna tell you what happened. You turn it down a little bit. Yeah, what happened? If you can back that song up, I'm on the I'm on the first probably 17 seconds of the song. Okay, which is heavily sampled. Yeah. Can we hear that, that that intro again? What did you do? You did some foot stomping or something? Yeah, it's, now check this one out. We'll see that. I'm in the crew of feet. Foot, nothing better than my first foot, session. Some foot yeah. stomps in a recording. I think I was almost 10 years old. Almost 10. Maybe nine. How'd you get? You were 10? Nine, nine or 10. Yeah. Wait, how did you, was your uncle 60, or something? 67, 68. I don't even know. How did you get that gig? Oh, okay, now check this out. This is the kind of, I'm from Detroit. This is kind of the beauty Detroit of Detroit Rock City. Yeah, this is the beauty of Detroit. Like, Detroit, we had a place called Plum Street. It's like the Tinker Street of, of uh, Detroit. Tinker Street to the main street in Woodstock for yeah. all you. Oh, yeah. For the rest yeah. of the yeah. world. Well, the rest of the world needs to become aware of Tinker Street. You know, some things have happened on Tinker yeah. Street. It's, it's some things happening. <laughs> yeah. See, see, you, you hear it right there. So check it. The, uh, I had some teachers when I was growing up. Like my, my all of my story is I think I haven't grown beyond like 14. Like I've, I'm a grandfather and all that kind of stuff. Now, but 14 is where I'm keeping my happy space, right? When I was nine or 10, we used to go on field trips, field trips. You know that thing, field trips? Yeah, I'm gonna share a field trip this, story with you after this, yeah. right, man. So they, you know, doing the field trip, uh, we used to go to places like uh, the Ford Museum, Henry Ford Museum, Green, what they call Greenfield Village, that's Dearborn, and uh, we would go to. Um, we would. Everybody went to the factory on Balloon Day, or you went to the the stadium on Bat Day. But I got these teachers when I when I hit about ten years old, and uh, they were first of all I'm in an all black school, right? And it's deep in the hood. I, I come from what they call the North End of Detroit. Uh, so the North End is my mother calling. The North End is Afro and, and has always been Afro, you know. And I had a teacher named Mr. Campbell. And Mr. Campbell was in 68, a guy who had grown his hair. He was a white guy who had grown his hair below his ears, because that was like a really being defiant when you had a page boy and you were a guy. Yeah. So this guy had that and he had a beard his tie dyes and so you know he was yeah. into his thing and he told us that he was gonna really take us culturally there. So first trip he took us to was a place called Plum Street. Plum Street we went to a, a like a little coffee house and this is a, a whole black class and they took us to see the strawberry alarm clock. Whoa do a in sound check, incense and peppermints. Yeah, so we watched that. Did they play that at sound check? Yeah. No. So, and then we watched a girl who was supposedly uh, hype woman motivated on Spanish fly, <laughs> and we were ten. We were going like, "What Spanish fly?" Because she's kind of like doing some. She's kind of like Ultra Anne Margaret on that door right now. And yeah. there's nobody helping her. She's just kind of helping herself over there. So that was our trip with Mr. Campbell. See hippies, see. So I was turned out right there. So the, the next trip was on us coming back from a, a, a trip, we passed the Motown building. 
And everybody went, ooh, we should go there. And a teacher on the bus said, maybe one day we will. So in no time flat, we got this, um, these permission slips to, to take in. This is the 60s. Yeah. So it's, a, it's like the, the trip hasn't been explained, but your parents need to give you permission to come. So we go, we get permission to go on whatever field trip, everybody's safe with the teachers. And we go to Motown, Studio B. Uh, and there's this guy who's explaining to us, he's like, you know, welcome to Motown. And uh, he welcomed us into the place. And he told us, like, look, kids, this is, how the board works and yada yada and it mutes and this is when i really picked up oh everything's on a single channel yeah and uh and can be manipulated ah and it was like at 10 i got it and this guy's talking about he said first thing is like welcome to motown uh do you know why we are success here at motown because we we practice quality control. We use quality control. And quality control is sticking out a song, seeing if it works in front of somebody. If it doesn't work, you go back, you rework. Or, you know, either you got something or you don't, but you, you polish it up or fix it where it needs to be fixed. And I totally got it. I don't even know if any of the kids got it, but I got it. This is only thing that ever got me excited anyway. So um, he says, uh, I'm, you know, I'm the boss. Barry, and I'm a producer. Barry Gordy? No, his name was, uh, his name was, uh, and my name is Mr. Whitfield. His name was Norman Whitfield. And Norman Whitfield was my teacher's first cousin, we find out later. Okay. Okay, so that's how we got in there. So, so he goes, and this is my artist, and he's going to sing this song. But before he sings the song, he, uh, we're going to test these mics out and see if. And so they put that song on, and they said they, they, there was mics close to the floor. And said, oh, everybody, you can't start. Play stopping. that again, VA. No. Yeah. yeah. You just talk over. Just play the whole thing. We'll so he's like, you know, start stopping. So now we are. So he's like stopping. That's you and all the kids. Yeah. Can the viewers out there hear this? Do we need to blast it, Jays? Let's start from the beginning. Blast that. Let's blast that. I want to hear all its little feet. singer had to sing the song in front of us because keep it up yeah. the, when he sang it the first time it didn't quite have the, the edge so they basically like we were actually the guinea pigs for the quality control because you guys like basically you guys like 10 year old kids you know, deciding whether this is cool or not so they had the singer sing over that's when they talked about overdubbing yeah it's like okay we're gonna overdub and uh, so they explained that he was the artist and his name was going to be Evan Starr. And uh, then when the, when the, 
we must have sat through him singing this thing about, I don't know, nine times, about yeah. Yeah, at least eight or nine times until we all, uh, he went to, uh, you think this one is good enough? You and saw we it. Like, yeah. And then he said, cool. You know, the rapid session said, cool. Do you guys will be the first one to hear it when it comes out. So, uh, so. History. Yeah. All right, we got to cut to a couple of commercials, but speaking of, that sample at the beginning. After the commercial, I want to talk about Dr. Dre and your influence on him. Ah, uh, let's. We'll be right back. Can I peep their brain? Oh. <laughs> long time guarantee series. This is a weird commercial. Can I get by? I have to get a service call in five minutes. Nah, you're gonna have to take the detour. I don't have time to take the detour. Not much time. I'll take a shortcut. Right from TCI Cable Brookhaven. Right on time. Yay! He made it. <laughs> so, Clip, what about uh? Let's talk about like you're you're partially responsible for Dr. Dre and you know the, the no. greatest hip hop of all time. No, I, I, I gotta say that my my genre and camp which is like exclusive to it you're part of yeah is a you know what it is it's basically a some cats that are like maybe 12 years younger than i i am listen to their parents records and figured out which ones they liked and when it was time to make rap records you you know, the DJ could go to like something old that their parents have been listening to. So I think everybody is influenced by all kinds of stuff. You know, hip hop, I just, for me, I rejected it. I was rejecting it because when I wanted to be in the business, I wanted to be as close as a Robert Plant or somebody that was singing some screaming rock and roll. Yeah. And I wanted, that was my thing. So I was able to do it. And then my voice changed. Um, that changed about, at about forty. So, uh, but I was a, basically a screamer yeah. with P Funk, and uh, but the music and the you know just the whole atmosphere it's all, it was already there. It's like you know you know you do a hip hop song and you do. You take a song that you already know. You don't have to like resell the beat. You got everybody already listening to it. And now they only have to listen to what you're saying over it. And that's been hip hop for a long, long time because that basically is how it started with somebody playing somebody else's record at a party. It's like the, you know, you know, the good DJ is the one that can figure out which, what is the good song at, at what moment. So, you know, to actually like want to take credit for any of that is kind of like. Mm. Did you ever meet Dre? Yeah. Did I ever meet Dre? Yeah. Check this out. I had a one year deal. Actually, it was just a one year kind of like, and I couldn't get out with a record label. And it was a buddy and I, we, we were called the Cadillac Height. We were supposed to have been signed to this whole big deal, but we were like we knew we were screwed like the first day after we signed the deal. So uh, we figured, well, let's just go to L.A. play it up. We're, we're a signed group, yeah. and we we went to um, we went to 
the unit there was a universal i think it was or one of those kind of places and it was a big what they call the uh bre exclusive the bmas or the bre's and it was a big convention yeah so this is a place where like a new artists could come some artists who are already out there could if they had grievance they had grievance boards then panels and you know it was the new music new music seminar equivalent of new acts or whatever they do in texas the one they do in texas south by yeah it was that and uh i'll never forget it <clears throat> there was just one crew that was there when you went to go into the front door and it was a bunch of guys a few girls, but a, bu a bunch of guys, not, not even a bunch, just enough to be in, in the front door with blue shirts on that said Ruthless. Hell yeah. And they had these records that said Ruthless, right? And they just kept saying, enjoy the, enjoy the conference, enjoy the conference. Like, I mean, it was the most... It was like reps for Ruthless, was or was it? It was them. It, it was, was them was trying to sell their record. NW. Nobody ever heard of it. It was them stuff out there, like promoting the record. And I remember going in, going, "Damn, we should have done, done that." <laughs> They're like out there promoting. And then at the same time, I'm going, "No, no, uh, I'm too cool for that." Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, that's kind of so, like shatters the, their image a little bit for me, that they're standing there. But it doesn't shatter. <laughs> it's, it, it really doesn't because it's like, you know, what came of that was yeah, no, somebody didn't. eventually put the dag thing on and said, uh, and, you know, all you need is one DJ in one region to get it popping. Like we had a song. A, we have a song, Atomic Dog. Yeah. Now, Atomic Dog, when we right delivered now. it to the to the rec record company, they were like so used to dealing with um, with uh, crooners that they didn't know what to do with some kind of song with backwards drums and then, you know, this whole kind of crazy idea, right? So, <laughs> for the Chase, first, show the dog. <laughs> so, for the first year, the yeah. It was considered a flop because nobody knew how to work the record. He's a sleeping dog. Huh? Actually, he's a he's a patient dog. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's the most. Oh wow, wow, you be oh you be a, bow wow, you be oh you be a, bow wow, wow. Sorry, I'm sorry, that was I got distracted. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that felt good. That felt good. Huh? <laughs> yeah, so you know the the deal was we put it out. <laughs> It was, it was considered a flop, but it, but one DJ in Kansas played it as a as a uh, without saying the name of the record. Uh, it was just he played it, and people would say, "Well, play that dog song again." They would call the station and play the dog song, and before you knew it, we. The same song that was considered a flop, and we it, we kind of like almost uh, uh, responded like we were a failure. The song actually on the R and B charts for a few years was always number two, one, two, or three with Billy Jeans and Beat It. Snoop Dogg was talking but about we, that song on our the other but day. But we didn't, we didn't even have a, a PR company talking about it. Like, you know, when Michael Jackson had his songs out there, it would be like people talking about how great the song was. We didn't have anybody out there. We didn't have that kind of machine to yeah. hype us. But, you know, who cares? Because the song did what it was supposed to do. And 
and when you think about it at the end of the day, there's a bunch of freak cats that just decided to do something stupid that day, and we can do that on another day and another day, you know, and it becomes something that even it's been a tool for for hip hop and uh he was talking about I was talking about it on Howard Stern the other day. It's like I was just being silly singing in the car, like you're all going straight to the studio with that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, cut to so we're we're in uh we're uh, in Motown studios and that what year was that? Motown, that was 67, 68. 67, 68, cut yeah. to 1990 something when the movie PCU Uh-oh. came out. Here it is right here. You guys, I'm sure you've seen it. Clip is the guy in the jester hat here. And there's one of the Baldwin brothers. There's Dr. Funkenstein. This is funny. <laughs> Wait. You see him in the jester hat, I think, to the right. There he is. Uh-oh. <laughs> you still have that jester hat? Oh, man. I think I tried to... I think every costume I ever had would, would, would be from maybe a fan is taking, like, a, a portion of the... We got to get you a new jester hat. Actually, that was like a whole jester's. Uh, that was like, uh, wow. It's all you know what's cool outfit. about that one is that uh, this was the beginning of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, careers. Uh, what was my man from from Entourage? Oh, Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven's first. He got thing. in some trouble though. He got uh, a, he got on that. Uh, what's the guy that's wearing the wearing, Favreau. Oh, that's John Favreau. I was, yeah. I, I was, I keep on forgetting that Tim and I yeah, think Baldwin his, brother. His first. Yeah, John Favreau made uh, Iron Man, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, there was a lot of firsts in there, and uh, that's a that's why I watched that movie like once a week. I think when it when it was that came out on video for years. I'm trying to think of what the it's a great the, college romp. The producer on on this set, I, I remember on this set. Uh, Basically, we did the session. There you are. <laughs> headed, headed to Japan. And we had a day and a half to be in L.A. And we did the, the uh, session. Went to Japan. Did like, I don't know, two weeks of shows. Popped back from, from, from Japan. And... Uh, as soon as we landed in LA, they bought the band tickets to go perform for something that we weren't even like. Like most of the stuff I've been in, I don't, I, I have no concept that I was supposed to be there the day before. <laughs> yeah, that's like me anytime I go to an airport. It's like anytime I end up in an airport, they're like, yeah, your flight was yesterday, dude. No, I, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> uh, I got a ticket to go to Cleveland one time. And I was told to go, and all of the band wasn't going. But uh, it was maybe two or three of us from, from the band were sent to go by George. He didn't tell us he was going as well, so we go to this place. And the band's being inducted in the Hall of Fame. I am in the clothes that I was, the last shirt that I was on, last unfunky shirt that I could put on. Was it a jester outfit? No, it wasn't even a costume. I, I think I had to throw on some kind of like silly hat to perform in the thing. <laughs> and then I walked out, I, I couldn't be in the whole ceremony. Because there was a fishbone show that I wanted to see. Yeah. There. But um, for, for, for that one, for um, like all kinds of special occasions, like uh, we'll show up at like uh, the Grammys. Like uh, we didn't know we were supposed to be at the Grammys. We just knew that we had a gig in L.A. 
and we will get there. And it's the Grammys, and <laughs> there's there's a set that needs to be done, and you're going to be doing the longest uh, uh, set ever done between some bands with who? Well, with Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Outkast, and Robert Rando, who's brand new. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. It's going to be a medley. Oh, well, we never worked with these guys. And I re- we, we done that one. And one time we got there and there was us and the Chili Peppers. That wasn't, we, we didn't get the memo. So you guys, you guys need a new manager. I can take. I, I make sure. No, these you know, it was well, a beauty in the thing. I mean, as silly as it as it is, and most people probably will say, you guys need to get your thing together. But the reality is, like, you can get your thing together and look all formal and last for about three and a half to five years and be a thing. Yeah, I've been part of a band that's already like got a sixty year legacy and, and has always done it somewhere ass backwards. It seems, it seems. You guys are from another planet. Hey, I th- I think about it like this is me interplanetary this is me funk. In, yeah, I mean, in 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 uh, you don't understand the ways of the human. Well, here's a here's a crazy part too. When I first joined the Funkadelics, I didn't I didn't want to be known by my name i wanted to be a character that you you saw or you like saw. like kiss anonymous yeah well they were our label Cass, mates label mates casablanca records yeah i was just trying to ex- uh, uh explain to somebody that like i have like a really bad back now but i used to wear the same kiss boots and we shopped at the jim statler's and these other kind of places where they they custom make us those boots and we we're both on by us having the same label we had the same kind of budget was aimed so my back is bad from wearing from wearing kiss boots do you know which ones silver kiss boots you wear ace fraley's boots no how about silver no they were not kiss boots oh they were like because kiss was newer we were like the first on casablanca then kiss came later but the but the wardrobe choice you know, it was all authorized by the same paymaster. So, like, I, I bet their backs are bad too. Did, did, did you ever meet Kiss? Uh, no, no. I mean, village people. I just met them. They're cool, and that was funny. You want to hear a joke? I just met village people for the first time at a party. Now, this has been some some years back, but it at a party that Vladimir Putin gave. Oh, yeah. It was a big affair. It was a because, few years ago. Yeah, Vladimir Putin wanted to show it was a few years the ago. country that he was in with the times. So This was recently, right? This was recently, yeah. you know. And so we get over there, and it's us, this is village a, people. Again, he wants to show this with and the times. And Depeche Mode. <laughs> Depeche Mode. Uh, Along with, I mean, this is like, you know, I mean, Usher was out and, and these kinds of things. It's been of new times, but they were all of us, like, cats, like, bellies, like, hanging out, you know, like you would see uh, my man that used to look all cool in his, like, cool leather jacket was just belly out there. Like, I'm a That's big me. belly guy. Well, I'm a big belly guy, but... <laughs> But he's wearing inappropriate he clothing. Had the, no, he had the age belly. He's going to get himself some overalls. He had the age belly. It was obvious that, you know. He's, <laughs> and, uh, and we were older, too. But, man. And that was. Uh, you were telling me tourists were, like, in their photos with you, not because they knew who you were, but because it was, like, you were black. I yeah, I got a, yeah. I got in a lot of uh, yeah. wedding pictures. At, yeah. In, uh, they didn't in, know who you in, were. In uh, St. Petersburg. Yeah. St. Petersburg. And uh, people would just pull me over into their wedding, like the, like the, like the uh, you know, they would run over and just say, 
you know, in the picture, and, and I said, cool. And I stand, and there's the bride and the groom standing there, and, the, and I'm standing there looking stupid, <laughs> going like, you know, because <laughs> we were like really, I guess, exotic. <laughs> when you think, it's, and a, it's a strange place over there. Oh, yeah, but I gotta say, tell you, I had a ball. There's like a, there's a funk mod that came down from Moscow. Now here's a here's the crazy part. Going over there, going over there, I went over there on the day that what is the guy that everybody's looking for? Uh what's his name? Where is Waldo? Waldo? Edward Snowden. Edward Snowden. <laughs> the, the day that Snowden was was there, who had just gotten gotten into the airport at in Russia, there I was walking through the airport with my bag. So oh, like, no. yeah. Is it Snowden? Is is the guy that's got all the secrets? Yeah, the guy that's got all the secrets. What's that, what's that guy? Jack Palance, Julian Assange, Julie. Yeah, yeah. So why they were looking for that guy? I was walking through the airport, like, and I remember going. Which is not strange for me because see your overalls. I made a thing to just wear overalls, and yes, sir. and challenge the uh, status quo. You know, public who are into like culture as we know it. And I've been around the world. In these overalls, I've been to China in these overalls. I don't, and what I do is I change shirts. Everybody, yeah, no. I change shirts. I wear Converse. I wear these same overalls. I've been to China, Russia. Uh, I'm next month. I'm going to Iceland. Uh, Did you get them at Kenko? Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. guessed that you got it at Kenko yeah, yeah. on Route Twenty Eight. Yeah. If you want to, so want to get that funkadelic look. Hey, if you live and if you live where you know I live, support local. And if you live where you live, support local. You know what I mean? Because we need to. Yeah. Casey, Casey, get over here. Yeah. Casey does his own thing. Oh yeah. Casey, come here. Yeah, I got that. I've learned like here, pure, pure dog talk now. Come on, buddy. Come here, man. Come on. Come in, big boy. <laughs> the one? Uh, oh, yeah. We're going to play. In... All right, yeah. I wanna, we're going to. We got a couple more things. I want to play a new segment from uh, from uh, our very own, Meltasia's very own, Jen Warren. It's called, uh, what was the name I, I came up with for that? It was called, uh... we didn't come up with a name for it yet. If you people, if everybody wants to write down what they think this New segment should be called. Write it in the comments section. Don't forget to. Yeah, she'll tell you everything. Uh, I want to. I want to. What is the new segment? This. Wait. Let's turn it over to the what's volume up. up. Buddy? We got... <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? We got a lot of cool stuff to be talking about this week. We got vape flames. We got deals. Don't forget to hit that smash button for the likes and follow and subscribe this button right up here. All right, so we're going to be talking about cool stuff. You know it. Remember last week, we'll do a recap. Rewatch the video or skip ahead three minutes. Yeah, what are we going to call that segment? What is art? <laughs> what is it? That's art right there. World what is, is art? What is art? Jen Warren, she's what a, is art? Yeah. Leave a comment. Hey, hey, Leave I, a comment. I, I, I actually, like, you know, we talk. I kind of, like, you know, did a little mind control to make you ask me to be on your show. Because I wanted to be. Uh, I'm like, fine, I'll take the guy from Funkadelic. Oh, yeah. Hey, for real. I, I watch it while I'm on the road. I've been watching it while I'm on the road. If, if I pick him up, is he going to attack me? Oh, no. It's a lot of dog. Well, a lot of pounds. It's the atomic dog. <laughs> oh, Put yeah. the music on. 
Yeah, this is how I travel. Here's a story about famous dogs for the dog that chases his tail. We'll be busy. Yeah. Yeah, this is a story of famous dogs. For the dog that chases his tail, we'll be busy. Well, you gotta understand this character focuses on me. I'm not sure if this dog is atomic right here. See, Bow Wow EPO EPA. Can I be a problem with a fucking dog? EPO EPA, Bow Wow EPO EPA. You got the chops. Oh, yeah. Bow Wow EPO EPA, Bow Wow EPO EPA. Let me jump up on stage at the Mountain Jam. Parliament Funkadelic is coming to Mountain Jam in Hunter, New York. Oh, yeah. And this. Can I hang out with you guys? Casey's going to be there as well. Can I come hang out with you guys at that? Oh, yeah. I hope so. I'm, well, if you invite me, I'll go. Yeah, please come. Oh, yeah. Be there. And now I'm going to jump on stage and go, bow, wow, wow, EPO, EPA. Yeah, we're going to have to roll in there together. We got to roll in there together. So the I'm Chester just, hat this time. Uh, how about that? Oh, we're, I can't do the diaper that's already taken. Oh, yeah. Let's listen. All right. Yes. Let's play. We're going to do everyone's zone about the rage about this Laurel Yanny thing. I think all you know what it's about. Every talk show has covered it. It's my turn. Turn it up loud. Tell me what you hear. Laurel. Laurel. Laurel, 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 Laurel. Is it in Mi- Laurel. Miami? Laurel, Miami, Laurel. So you get the weird mashup. Miami. I get Laurel, Miami, Miami. Laurel. Miami. Laurel. Laurel, Laurel. She's changing Laurel. the frequency. Laurel, Laurel, Laurel. Miami. I heard Miami briefly Laurel. on the White House one after Laurel. watching it like the third time, Laurel. where they listening to it at the White House. Laurel. Laurel. I hear Laurel. 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 She's changing the frequency. Laurel. Oh. Laurel. I just heard Yanny. Laurel. I just yeah, heard Yanny. Laurel. What, what Laurel. is this? Laurel. You know about this phenomenon going on? Laurel. You either hear Laurel or Yanny. Laurel. You hear both, don't you? Laurel. I just heard Yanny. Laurel. Every once in a while, I hear Laurel. Yanny. It's a Laurel. sonic phenomenon. Laurel. 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 What do you hear? What do you hear, Atomic Dog? Laurel. 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 Yummy. Laurel. 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 So Laurel. check this out. One time I was overseas and somebody told me, said, you Americans, like you, you speak like this. And uh, I'm wondering what it is that they hear from us when they speak, when we speak. Is it, is it are we sounding like yammy or, <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, I didn't, are they kind of like interpreting it? Wow, they're saying, I say no. I just said, "How are you?" or something. You know, today I I, uh, I was talking to somebody, and I guess I don't do my T's correctly. And I was talking about this uh, actress, Barbie Benton, but I call her Barbie Benton. It's a. I guess I got a little bit of a. Is it bad grammar, or is it that your your? Uh, uh oh, seem better if we do this. Uh oh, we're doing like a a new set. This is nice. It just looks like a big. <laughs> Let's get a more a little more light on his face. Oh uh, yeah. Everybody, welcome to the world of Casey. You know, Casey is a uh, 
So he steals the show sometimes. You're talking oh, he's a show stealer wherever you you could be anywhere Does on on the planet, and you may. You, I even went. It to looks like a, a garbage bag though on the screen. <laughs> like you just have a big pile of trash. Oh, his head's right there. Oh, his head's right there. All right, I've been looking. Uh -oh. It's a reverse image. It's Mr. Personality right Bow there. Bow wow wow yippee o yippee a. Bow wow yippee o yippee a. Bow wow wow yippee o yippee a. Bow wow yippee o yippee a. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, sorry I interrupted. I yeah, think yeah. we all hear music differently. Because this is just this is people are saying like oh it's just some trend. It's not a trend. This is a newly discovered. Yeah, it's, well, it's just called frequency. Frequency, because I'm, you know, I play in a band that's really loud. Yeah. Really loud. Like, yeah. You know, the Marshall Stack loud. And I've always, I've always stood in front of a, a Marshall Stack or rows of Marshall Stacks. And I seem to talk loud now based upon to be, to even hear myself with, you know, a gang of like, you know, less, less Paul behind my, my, my back. I'm not sure on where I'm hearing pitch wise or, you know, uh, if I can hear my T's and S's or, so, you know, save your ears, everybody, or you'll talk loud like me. Yeah, I was I sang in a band for years and uh, I don't think my ears is as good as it used to be because when you're the singer especially, you're in the center of everything. Yeah. Hey, but, but I'm a Laurel man. But, we we gotta. I guess I'm getting the signal right now. Are we closing? We gotta close. But uh, can we? Can you come back on? Uh, you, you're a big fan of the nude party. They're gonna be on soon. You wanna come on with yeah, the nude party? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a. You know what? Before you go, I'm a big fan of you because I like the way that you are enrolling music. And the way that you are presenting music, there's a thing where we are is, if I may say, up we're upstate New York. I'm not from upstate New York, but when I got here, or shall I say, I've I've been learning about the flavor of the upstate, not the Americana part. I've been learning about that as well, but I've been learning something about. Um, uh, generations, because I, I'm not old enough to be a hippie, but I, I was destined to be in the area that I'm, even though the hippies are split. We're like honorary hippies. Yeah, some kind of way. I'm a hippie by default. I had to wear bell bottoms because it was, it was the thing to do. It's like, it's like skinny pants today. It's like I had to wear bell bottoms yeah. because 18 year olds were wearing bell bottoms trying to like not go to the war. Yeah. Or whatever, and uh, or the ones that even were coming back from the war. Once they get, once they made it back, they wanted some bell bottoms. And I'm not part of the the the, the generation that did that. I'm a part of the generation that made computers. You know, uh, Atari. The, no, what what is what is what is the Macintosh guy? Steve Jobs. Yeah. He's like I mean, my age. Prince no one's my Bush age. Michael Atari. Jackson's my age. It's kind of like that's my age. Yeah. And so I'm an old fogey. So, but I know, I know where there's entertainment, and I gotta say that when I first got turned on, like back in the day when I got turned on to like Facebook, right? At the beginning of Facebook, people don't really realize they used to ask you what kind of what kind of music did you like? Yeah. Do you like soul, reggae, rock? Then there was a box that said Upstate. People don't realize at the beginning they were enrolling a lot of people. Upstate was a classification and it's a genre. So upstate regional is, rock. Well regional music. You wanna you wanna give it ten different names now? <laughs> like like Neo Soul, it's soul and R and B and you know there's you know, regional rock. Okay, if you say regional re if you give it a name. Well, let's, let's, let's cut to what you like about me. What I like about you? <laughs> uh, first of all, you're animated. Uh, I think you're 
a good look on the on the screen. Yeah, see, but we, we but let's not good. blow this cat's head up too 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 far. You know, we got a good thing, me and you. And on that note, I want you, I want you back on the show as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, I'll do you. Hey, 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 BA, I want to close out with a different Hey-o. song. The, the, the get up. Yeah, because I found out I think we can curse on here. So let's let's listen to that P-Funk. Let me do my outro song. Is this your... Uh, uh, everybody, don't forget... Curse fuck. Now that's art right there. Fuck and dang. Shit, fuck. Why are we going there? Now I'm supposed to be here in, in, in a grown up capacity. Yeah. I'm three times the age of this. This is what I love about you because you do bend a few rules. Everybody and the animal in the house. That's right. Parliament Funkadelic Clip Pay. <laughs> yeah. Shit and damn. Get off your ass and jam. We found out we can curse everybody. There's a list of rules over there. It doesn't say you can't curse. It says you can't no, talk about bodily no, you, fluids. Be kind now. Because now we're going to have, like, we're going to have, like. Yeah, no, we'll take it easy. I don't, I don't want to get. You, at least get your bleep parts on, brother. AC, I'm about to cry now. Because of the insensitivity of your. Usage of the language to the people who cannot bear that. I got. I got to say this. One time, I wanted to come up with a shirt for for for, for the area, and somebody said, "Well, that won't fly because the people need you to like, you know, uh, be kind." And a girl came by with something like, you know, "Eat me" was on her thing. I was going, "Okay, well." Yo, yo. Yeah, she's you like, you know, 23, and she's going for eat me. What could I be doing uh, that's, <laughs> that could be, you know, could trump her, you know? I, I, it's, it's generation. Hey, and, and I got to commend you, you guys for making uh, life still uh, entertaining. Um, we got to do something out here in the mountains. Yeah, hey. I want to I want to melt with you guys when uh you're gonna come to the big the big meltdown uh, celebration. Oh yeah, because you know I'm all about the meltdown. I used to do the thing around town called the super, uh, the the 420 super. Uh, what was it called there? The four the four intergalactic super, super funk super, planetary. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, yeah, you know what? Well, yeah, we'll go a little longer. Let's let's show that other. Uh, no, you you know what? Bands. Everyone has to has to. We can't talk about U R I N E, <laughs> but we can say shit and damn. No, Get come on, this ass. is totally like our, now. You now we're going into R Kelly kind of like. Oh. Area, but the same. We don't. We hey, don't, need, we don't need to be doing that. For real. Thank you, Clip. I'm eating right now. Thank you, Clip. All right, there, brother. Turn it up, baby. And the animal in the house. <laughs> Bow wow wow, 
Bow wow wow, yippee oh yippee bow wow, yippee oh yippee You want to grab that mic and like stand here now, right? Bow wow wow, yippee oh yippee bow wow yippee oh yippee Bow wow 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 Oh, wow, you beau, you beau. Get that sweat off of me. Give me a fresh coated dog. Oh, Are you serious, man? Are we out of here? That's just the dog in me. Is this the end of the show? Until the end of the song. That's oh. just the dog in me. Oh, this is the start of the show. Huh? Are we starting the show? Let's get this show on the road. I, I, I see you. Be, you're going to become the new king of uh, of the dog, pal. That's right. The king Bye. Of inter- king of what? Of entertainment. Bye, everybody. That's right. Ain't free, they ain't got nothing on you. <laughs>